I'm going to show you how I take ultimate control of my arc stability and my TIG welding, starting with CK laser. So this is CK laser alloy tungsten electrode. This is my favorite all around electrode for all of my welding. This stuff is designed for robotic applications. So this is basically all I exclusively use since 2015. CK laser tungsten has the chartreuse green band on it. So that's how we can recognize this is the laser alloy. Laser stands for lanthanum, yttrium, zirconium. This laser electrode was designed specifically for robotic applications to give crisp, clean arc starts that are repeatable for days on end. And that's exactly what I find with this electrode. I want a repeatable grind angle on here, something that's completely consistent from electrode to electrode because the grind angle that we put on the electrode changes the arc shape and penetration profile. So if we have all of our tungstens at the same grind angle, we're always going to be delivering the same penetration and the same arc. If there's any contamination that's been introduced to the electrode, like these that I've already ran, these are, have been contaminated. And when that tungsten is glowing red uh, and it's essentially porous, that grain structure opens up. And if any foreign metal is introduced to this electrode, it alloys that whole tip all the way down to where it meets the collet or the gas lens inside the cup. All of that contamination will cause an erratic arc and instability in the arc. And so we want to remove all of that and start over with a fresh and clean piece of electrode. And so right here, there's no way to physically grind off that contamination because it's embedded throughout the tip. One of the biggest things I see many welders getting frustrated with is they don't have any arc stability and they'll go and they'll regrind this contaminated tip. And even though it looks clean and it has a nice looking tip or a nice shaped point on the electrode, all this contamination is still embedded through. And so when you light up on that arc, essentially it is already pre-dipped and contaminated. And when that is still or the uh, aluminum, any foreign metal alloy that's alloyed in this tungsten tip is going to melt and start causing a bunch of variants in the arcs, causing the arc to flutter, swirl, and we're not going to be able to hold a true arc and deliver the amperage we need to the puddle. So remove those tips, throw them away, and get back and take control of your TIG welding. You can see here, there's a bunch of, there's a bunch of tips that I removed. So all of these tips are contaminated. Like all of this is contamination. Even these ones that look nice and look like they are a nice, true, clean point. Those have all been contaminated and those are going to produce an erratic arc that's unstable and it's really, really hard to control. So, Let's put a grind on this. So the best way that I know how to take care of my electrodes is with the Turbo Sharp from CK. This is an awesome tool that produces very repeatable, clean, perfect tungsten grinds. This gives you a linear tungsten grind with a diamond grit that puts a very, very smooth finish. This grinder has a adjustable angle on the grinder head so we can adjust our electrodes from 20 degrees all the way to 60 degrees so we can get a large array and control of different penetration profiles and arc shapes from this. So the best way I know how to put a really, really consistent point on these without having it taper to one side or the other, when I put the electrode in the grinder and I spin it, what I like to do is completely let go and then grab it again and put a slight amount of pressure and then let go and spin again. And just, a, just, a, just that little bit of release helps the electrode not put a flat spot or start tapering elongated towards one side of the electrode or the other. So let's fire this up and sharpen our lasers. Right here, you can see I pretty much ground a perfect grind on this end of this electrode. It's a very, very uniform point, and there's no side-to-side -side variation, and we basically have a perfect shape cone. We're going to put a couple more tungsten through this grinder and just show you how repeatable this is. So there's two electrode grinds, pretty much identical. There's not really any flat spots. All those grinding striations are running lengthwise through the electrode. And it's quite literally a perfect electrode grind. So 
So here I ground four of these electrodes and they have an identical grind angle on each electrode. I ground these at 30 degrees. So this is a 30 degree point that's completely identical on each of these electrode points. 30 degrees gives a really, a really good medium ground of a good penetration profile and really, really good arc stability and arc control. If you want to increase your arc control and stability, uh, going to a 20 degree grind will help really fan that arc out and give you a really good control overall, but you're going to decrease the penetration depth. And if you want to increase that penetration depth, going towards like a 40 degree or maybe even a 50 degree tungsten grind angle is going to narrow that arc, increase your penetration depth, but it's going to be a little bit harder to control. But those are some of the common grind angles that I use on my tungstens. Another thing I really like about this tungsten grinder is it has a slot in the top that you can blunt the tip of your electrode if you need to, or you can reface it if you try to break the tip off and it kind of cracks sideways. You can reface that tungsten down there against the diamond wheel. And this head is uh, completely contains all of the grinding dust. So all that dust is contained inside the head, and then we can discard that later. I really like to make sure I don't let the dust load up in this, and I always empty this out pretty frequently. Um, you don't want tungsten loading up inside around that diamond wheel and causing any issues. The more you take care of this tungsten grinder, it's going to last you for years on end. It also has a variable speed control, so you can really dial in your grind um, to the speed that you like to grind it at. Something that's really important as well is never force your electrode into the grinding wheel. If you're forcing that tungsten into the wheel, you're gonna burn the electrode tip and you're gonna oxidize this. Right here, you can see that this is an oxidized tip that I removed. Something that is also very important to get complete arc control and stability is don't ever let your tungstens burn like this and oxidize. That oxidized layer on the surface is gonna cause interference with the electricity and it's gonna cause more resistance on your electrode and that's not what we want. So if your tungsten has color on it, discard it, remove it and start fresh because we want ultimate control in our TIG welding. This is my favorite way to produce a completely repeatable, consistent, perfect tungsten every time.